Okay, in this podcast, I want to go over how gluten impacts your thyroid. So the key thing to first understand about gluten and thyroid function, it, it really is an issue only if you have Hashimoto's, an autoimmune uh, condition. And then gluten can be a significant trigger for that response. Now, as most of you know, uh, gluten is found in wheat products. And wheat products are like wheat, barley, rye, spelt, kamut. Um, there's also hidden sources of of, of uh Gluten found in things called modified food starch. So if you ever look at a label and there's and it's one of the ingredients is modified food starch, there's a strong possibility that that could be gluten. And modified food starch is found even in some nutritional supplements. And modified food starch is definitely uh, found in food products and even some medications um, have modified food starch as a as a filler. And then we also have gluten exposure with cross contamination. So for example. Frying, uh, frying oils were they? They're frying, you know, breadcrumb, you know, shrimp one second, and then something else in the second, second time with like French fries, and then those fries now have gluten contamination. So it's a common source. It's a common issue. And then one of the questions people always ask is like, why is gluten such an issue now? Is this really a real thing? Is this just due to trends, or is this due to a fad? And the reality is, is that it's not a fad. And some studies have really shown that. There's been a dramatic explosion with gluten sensitivity. Some of these were published where they looked at soldiers at Warren Air Force Base, for example, and they matched uh, 10,000 soldiers with people today, age and sex uh, uh, matched subjects. And they looked at the rates of how many of them had have gluten antibodies because these military um, communities, they save blood from their soldiers and freezers and different institutions and universities save blood so they can go back in time and compare antibodies from 10, 20, 30 years ago to now. And when you look at blood samples from 30 years ago to now, there's a dramatic difference in the amount of gluten sensitivity. So it's no, it's not just a trend that they're actually finding studies that when they look at samples of blood 30 years ago to now, that there's been an explosion of immune reactions to gluten. And then people typically ask, like, why is that happening? So part of the reason that's happening is uh, how wheat uh, is processed. Uh, wheat is now broken down into softer forms of wheat through food processing called deaminated gliadins. They tend to be very reactive. So when you buy like a pretzel or a cookie uh, nowadays, those proteins have been changed, deaminated. For some people, that's very immune reactive. There's also studies published where gluten is binding to things like glyphosates. And glyphosates, when they bind to gluten, make it change the protein of the gluten, proteome, which makes it much more immune reactive. So there's been an explosion of gluten sensitivity worldwide that's not due to fad. And uh, everything from um, how food is manufactured to uh, pesticides, binding to gluten substances, uh, and even uh, some of the hybridization that they do with different types of wheat and barley and rye, where they're not genetically modified, but different seeds are blended together so they become more weather more weather resistant and they can avoid bugs eating them and so forth. Those all those have all led to a different gluten or different wheat product, and those wheat compounds tend to be very immune reactive. And when you look at certain conditions, autoimmune diseases in particular, they're very sensitive to gluten, and specifically people that have hypothyroidism Hashimoto's. And when people have Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, they have a gene sensitivity, a genetic sensitivity to either being what's called celiac disease or just being gluten sensitive. So there's different types of gene gene markers we have. And one of them involves how our immune cells and T cells respond. And those are called human leukocyte antigen genotypes. And these are also known as HLA-DQ genotypes. And these can be tested. So one of the things we know is that certain diseases, especially immune-related diseases, have various HLA-DQ genotypes. And for Hashimoto's, the HLA-DQ genotype um, to turn on Hashimoto's disease is very similar to the HLA genotype. It's HLA-DQ2 and 8 and HLA-DQ1 and 4 that are common with Hashimoto's people. And HLA-DQ2 and 8 is found with people that have celiac disease, which is an extreme form of gluten sensitivity. And those that have HLA-DQ1 and 4 um, don't have celiac disease, but they have a less severe form called gluten sensitivity. 
So we know that just the fact you have Hashimoto's, you have the gene type to be very sensitive to gluten or or even have celiac disease, which we'll, we'll talk about. I'll break it down for you to kind of explain the difference. That's another narrow area of confusion. So to kind of recap and build up on what I want to get to, which is how does gluten impact your thyroid? The first thing is that it's really not just your thyroid. It's really for people that have hypothyroidism and 98% of hypothyroidism actually have Hashimoto's. And for them, gluten is basically a protein and proteins can trigger the immune response. And many people develop immune responses to gluten, which is gluten sensitivity. And gluten has become a bigger issue because the protein gluten has been has been hybridized, has been haptonized, meaning glyphosates have bound to the gluten proteome, making it more reactive. And they've been manufactured differently through deamidation process. It's so it's easy to to make processed food. And many people that have um, Hashimoto's, uh, hypothyroidism, have gluten sensitivity. Now, when you look at gluten, gluten is basically the protein of wheat, but gluten gets further broken down to gliadins and glutenins. Those are both proteins of wheat. And then glutens, there's alpha gluten, uh, gamma gluten, omega uh, gluten, and then there's gl uh, glutenins, there's different portions of glutenins, and then there's another portion of wheat called deaminated gliatin. So there's all these different proteins in wheat. So one of the first things you need to know is that if you're being tested for gluten sensitivity, if you only have like a wheat test, or if you only have a, a gliadin test, um, and it doesn't specify what type of gliadin it is, it's most likely just alpha gliadin. You may have not been tested completely for gluten sensitivity. So you really need a profile that measures alpha gliadin, gamma gliadin, omega gliadin, glutenins. Um, and this is uh, where I personally like to use a panel from Cyrex Labs. And in disclosure, I'm a, I'm a consultant to them. Um, but but they do a very thorough test of what's called the glute, the entire gluten proteome, so all the different branches of, of gluten. And not only do they check alpha, gamma, omega uh, gliadins and glutenins, they also check for deaminated gliadin. And there's another portion of wheat that has been shown to be an issue with, with uh, Hashimoto's people, and that's wheat germ agglutinin. And wheat germ agglutinin isn't the gluten protein, it's the lectin portion of, 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 of wheat. So there's a glyc glycoprotein, like sugar protein portion of wheat that's very, very sticky, and that is known as a lectin. And the lectin portion of wheat is wheat germaglutinin. And studies have now shown that wheat germaglutinin uh, reactivity can really be an issue for thyroid, specifically its an impact on TPO. And then studies have shown that people that make gluten antibodies can have cross-reactivity. So now let's get into really how gluten really impacts people that have Hashimoto's thyroid issues. So first of all, there's a gene uniqueness between the disease and people that sensitivity. So more than likely, if you have Hashimoto's, you have a very strong possibility to have these genes express themselves either into celiac disease or into gluten sensitivity. And then if you look at these sensitivities to gluten, you may be tested for gluten sensitivity if you have Hashimoto's or hypothyroidism, and you may have had your test results be negative. And part of the reason may be because you haven't been checked for the entire gluten proteome. So remember, gluten is alpha, gamma, omega gliadin, glutenins, deaminated gliadin, and even there's a protein called wheat germ glutenin that's there. So if those aren't all tested, then you may not, you may think that you don't react to gluten from a lab test, but you actually may. So if you react to these proteins, a couple things can happen to you. And it really depends whether you have celiac disease or not celiac disease. But let's just talk about a mechanism that, that can relate to both. And that's something called cross-reactivity. So there's a concept in immunology called molecular mimicry. It's also known as cross-reactivity. And this is where normally when you make an antibody to a protein, the antibody attaches to the protein like in it, like just like a key fits into a keyhole, right? It's a, those, there's a protein, the immune system makes an antibody to a stick and attach to it that's very specific for that protein. And that's the whole anti, antigen, the foreign protein, and antibody reaction, antigen-antibody complex. The term molecular mimicry or cross-reactivity, they mean the same thing, came about because what they found, what the immunologists found is that there are some proteins in the body that are very similar in structure to each other. So when an antibody is made for one protein, 
if another protein has a similar enough structure to it that that antibody can also bind to that other protein. And when antibodies attach to a protein, that then tells the immune system to generate T cells and natural killer cells to go destroy that foreign protein, that so-called antigen that needs to be uh, eliminated. So one of the interesting things is that gluten has been shown to cross-react with the thyroid proteins. So there's molecular mimicry s similarities between the proteins in gluten and the proteins of the thyroid gland. And this has been found with thyroglobulin, uh, and, and this has also been found to be a potential issue with TPO. So if a person is gluten sensitive, not everyone is gluten sensitive, but if a person is gluten sensitive, then they'll start to make antibodies to gluten. And then once they make these antibodies to gluten, th these antibodies to gluten circulate in the bloodstream and they'll bind to any wheat, gluten food products that are there, but they can also bind to the thyroid glands, to the thyroid proteins. And when those gluten antibodies bind to the thyroid glands, that antibody bound to that tissue signals the immune system to destroy the tissue. So this is how gluten has been shown to be a trigger for Hashimoto's people. So one of the mechanisms is just related to cross-reactivity. Now, the interesting thing is that wheat germ agglutinin, not, not the gluten portion of wheat, but wheat germ agglutinin being the lactin portion of wheat, the sticky glycoprotein section of wheat, has also been found to cross-react with TPO, that's the target site for autoimmune destruction of thyroid, Hashimoto's. So some people can be tested for gluten sensitivity, like testing alpha gliadin antibodies, and they may be totally negative, but they're still having a reaction to gluten because it's not the gluten that's causing it, but it's the lectin portion of gluten called wheat germ agglutinin that's causing the reactivity. So this is why it's so important to also measure things like wheat germ agglutinin reactivity. But to say it very simply, the big picture is this. Gluten is a protein, and these proteins have different branches. Gamma, alpha, omega, gliadins, glutenins, deaminated gliadin, and wheat germ agglutinin. And any of, the, any of these branches can trigger an immune response, and then cross those antibodies with those proteins can cross-react and also attach to the thyroid gland, causing that reactivity. Because of that complex nature, there are many people that only get one portion of the branch tested and never know they have gluten sensitivity and get diagnosed that they're okay to eat gluten, but they still have these immune reactions. So to put it pretty simply, um, it's very likely that if you have Hashimoto's, you probably have gluten sensitivity and those antibodies you make with being sensitive to gluten have the potential to bind to your thyroid gland tissue and promote further destruction. So that's one of the key impacts between gluten antibodies and why it's an issue with Hashimoto's people. Now, what you should also know, and people always ask this question and they're confused about it, about it, is they don't know the difference between gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. So let me explain that to you if you haven't heard, if you haven't, if you haven't uh, understood what the difference is. So both gluten sensitivity and celiac disease or immune reactions to gluten. So the immune system will react against gluten. What's different in celiac disease is in celiac disease, you have an autoimmune response directly to the intestinal lining uh, that, you, that you have with aggressive T cell responses. So in celiac disease, you have a specific gene type expression, also found in commonly with Hashimoto's overlap, which is HLA DQ2 and 8. And when people with that gene type get exposed to gluten proteins, the gluten proteins have a response on the gastrointestinal immune cells, mucosal immune cells, where they turn on very, very aggressive T cells to then destroy not only the intestines, but cause systemic inflammation. So that's the key feature of celiac disease. And in celiac disease, you get not only inflammation throughout the body and also triggering Hashimoto's and other autoimmune diseases, but celiac disease leads to severe destruction of the intestinal lining to the point where someone can have like malabsorption syndromes and develop micronutrient deficiencies and lose weight and have some serious health problems that take place with it. 
So that's that's the key thing. So celi- think of celiac disease as a much more severe reaction to gluten that it actually causes autoimmune or self-tissue destruction against the intestines when a person gets exposed. Now, gluten sensitivity doesn't do that. Gluten sensitivity isn't the celiac disease response. They don't have that aggressive genetic T-cell response. They make an- a person makes antibodies against gluten, but the severity of that immune response is not as great because they don't have that s- significant genetic T-cell response that's found with celiac disease. Now, both of them have antibodies to gluten, and both of those conditions will make antibodies to gluten, which can cross-react with thyroid tissue proteins. But celiac disease is, is much, much worse, and it's much, much more aggressive, and it can be very devastating for um, Hashimoto's. Now, in the actual immunology autoimmune literature, I mean, researchers have come out with studies saying, if you have Hashimoto's, you need to be absolutely screened for celiac disease and gluten sensitivity. And if you have celiac disease, studies have shown that majority of patients, if they don't go off gluten, will develop things like Hashimoto's, as well as uh, other autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis within a very short period of time. So... um, It does make sense sometimes to know if you do have gluten antibodies and are gluten sensitive, if you actually have celiac disease or not. Now, there's different ways to determine if you actually have gluten sensitive or celiac disease. If you have celiac disease, you have an elevated marker on your blood that can be measured called transglutaminase 2. And if transglutaminase 2 is also elevated, that's a laboratory marker for celiac disease. And that combined with uh, gene markers that you can get done with a cheek swab test uh, for HLA-DQ2 and HLA-DQ subtypes can can help determine if you actually have this gen- genetic severe form of reactions to gluten. And the interesting thing is, is that if you do have actual celiac disease, gluten will be devastating for you. It's, it's not just inflammation, but it can really, really compromise your gut uh, anatomy, and it can definitely flare up your autoimmunity. At the same time, what it also means is that if you actually have celiac disease and you go off gluten, it's very possible that you can have your thyroid go into to, to remission. If you have celiac disease and you go off gluten, you could have your thyroid hormone replacement cut in half or more. That's what some studies have been shown and published. You don't see that same degree of positive reactivity with people that just have the subtle form called gluten sensitivity. So, you know, what happens that is out there is that people see this connection with the gluten and celiac disease, and then they go into forums and they hear people say, I went off gluten, it changed my life, everything was dramatically better, I could never touch it again, and then it made, it made this huge impact in how I was feeling. And those people more like most likely had celiac disease. And then some people are like, yeah, I went off gluten, I felt a little bit better, it wasn't dramatic, I don't want to eat it because I know it has an impact on me, but I don't have these miracle reactions other people, other people have. And that maybe because they just have gluten sensitivity and not celiac disease. So that's one of the main issues you really want to understand about why. Why does gluten impact some people with Hashimoto's more than others? And, and the answer is some people have full-blown celiac disease and some people just have gluten sensitivity. So that's that's the key part of that first part. Now, what happens with gluten sensitivity and also with celiac disease is they both involve B cells. So B cells make antibodies. So whether you have celiac disease or gluten sensitivity, antibodies get made, those antibodies get circulated into the bloodstream, and then those antibodies can um, bind to different tissues on the thyroid and cause potential cross-reactivity. But also when you have autoimmunity and you're sensitive to a food protein and you get exposed to it, that just creates a systemic level of inflammation. So those are the key, key mechanisms that also contribute to Hashimoto's is general systemic inflammation. Now, when most people that have Hashimoto's start reading about what to do and diet and lifestyle, you know, they're going to come across that gluten is a big issue. Some people will take it seriously, some people won't. But I would suggest if you have Hashimoto's, you take it extremely seriously and you you can test for it, but realize If you test for gluten and you're not checking all the different subtypes of gliadin like we talked about, alpha, gamma, delta uh, uh, gluten, gliadinin, deaminated gliadin, and also wheat germ agglutinin, you may test negative just for gliadin antibodies, which when the labs don't tell you what type it is, it's just alpha. 
Um, and, and don't let that fool you that you can eat gluten. You just may need to go off it. Now, when we say go off gluten, we mean 100%. Like if you still dabble with gluten and just have it on weekends, you you will still trigger your immune response significantly enough, whether you have gluten sensitivity or celiac, so you can't even tell if it's helping you or not. So you really need to go 100% gluten-free to see if you have any type of difference with it. And for a majority of people that have Hashimoto's, whether they have gluten sensitivity or celiac disease, they notice a big difference when they go off gluten, that their inflammation comes down, that their thyroid isn't swollen as much, um, their mood changes, okay? But for some, there's no effect. And if you have no effect and you try to gluten-free diet, there's a couple reasons why that may be possible. One possibility is you may actually not have any immune reactions to gluten. It's pretty rare that happens, and I would say most people don't have that. <laughs> You know, everybody wants to be that one, you know, person, that, that small percentage of people that have have the same gene types for celiac and gluten sensitivity types as they do with Hashimoto's, but not react. But it's it's a very small amount. The more likely reason that you went off gluten and you still don't feel any bigger difference is because you, you haven't identified what being 100% gluten-free is. You may still have an exposure. You may have not removed uh, hidden sources of gluten, like modified food starch we talked about earlier. Um, you may have foods that aren't clearly labeled that they're, they have gluten in them that you still may be eating. Um, so those that's one possibility. Another possibility is that you actually need to do more than being off gluten. <laughs> so there are some proteins that are very similar to gluten, and these are called cross-reactive proteins to gluten. So just like gluten can cross-react to thyroid tissue, meaning the antibodies formed against gluten are able to bind to thyroid target proteins uh, involved with Hashimoto's and trigger the inflammatory response. The proteins generated against, for example, milk protein that's called casein are similar enough to produce antibodies that are very similar to gluten. This is why most people that just go off gluten may not, that don't feel better, they may need to go gluten and dairy free. And furthermore, even gluten-free grains like like rice, for example, uh, corn, even potato that are, that are used in gluten-free products, many those proteins in potato and rice and corn that are typically eaten on a gluten-free diet are similar enough in structure that they also can cross-react as if the person is eating gluten. And this is why the whole field of grain-free uh, paleo, autoimmune paleo came by. It wasn't because it was something trendy, it's because clinicians like myself and other people, we would see people come in really sick from autoimmunity and they could only eat vegetables and fruits and meats. And they couldn't have any type of grains, they couldn't have any dairy products. And that really later became known as uh, autoimmune paleo. But it, it was just an observation of real life patients and what their tolerance levels are. Now, as more and more studies have come out, we realize that gluten and milk and other grains have similar protein structures and they can cross react with each other. And many people that have autoimmunity also have reactions to nightshades, which are alkaloid triggering compounds in foods, or to even to uh, lectins, which are that glycoprotein portion of foods that may be an issue. So if you have a thyroid issue and you've you remove gluten, you definitely need to maybe go go just go all the way. Go autoimmune paleo. Avoid gluten, avoid dairy, avoid grains, and see what happens. And you need to give yourself at least, you know, two to six months to see how you feel. Now, one of the questions people always ask is, can I eat them again? Well, <laughs> probably not. When you have autoimmunity, you have this overactive immune response. So when you find you have celiac, let's say you have celiac disease, it's very unlikely you, you'll be able to tolerate milk. And even studies done on on celiac disease patients show only a small percent of people that have celiac disease get into remission just by avoiding gluten, that they also have to avoid milk protein too, and even for the more other grains. And it's the same with Hashimoto's and any, any other autoimmune disease. So to kind of summarize, the big picture is this. Gluten can have a significant impact on the thyroid if you have Hashimoto's. Now, 98% of the people that have hypothyroidism have Hashimoto's. So if you're hypothyroid, more than chances are you probably have gluten sensitivity. That's because of overlapping HLA-DQ gene types. Now, some 
People that have reactions to gluten have actual celiac disease, which is a T-cell response. And some people that react to gluten just have the re reaction to sensitivity, meaning they, just, they don't have the exaggerated genetic T-cell response that just makes them antibodies against it. Both gluten sensitivity and celiac disease raise antibodies. Those antibodies can cross-react with thyroid target proteins, but celiac disease, you have a much, much more aggressive T-cell response. So those that have celiac disease are the ones that really have the miracles happen when they go gluten-free. Those that have gluten sensitivity don't have those big miracles, but they have their inflammation reduced. At the end of the day, you really want to go off gluten if you have Hashimoto's, you want to take that very seriously. Know that testing can be flawed if you haven't checked the entire gluten proteome. And it's very likely that you may need to do more than just gluten, sens <coughs> gluten sensitivity, <coughs> that you have to really go on a autoimmune paleo diet. Those are the key things that really show the relationships between gluten and its impact on your thyroid. Hope that was helpful, and thank you for listening.